Welcome, everyone out there in internet land. It is me again, your hostess with the mostess. My name is Will, and I'd like to welcome you to another video here on 411 Now. So today, obviously, from the title of this video, you can see we are talking about Jared Lasik yet again. So, Jared Lasik had court on the 8th of March at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was broadcasted via WebEx. He had court. I listened to it live, and there were a couple hundred other people who were in on the WebEx stream itself who listened to it as well. So, what did we learn from the case? Well, his attorney, Mr. Richards, decided right off the bat to have, you know, ask the court to dismiss the charges and not allow them to ever file the charges again in the future. The judge, Mandy Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N, listened to oral arguments from the defense and oral arguments from the prosecution. She then read the actual case law and how the law is was written back then and said, no, I'm not dismissing the charges. Everything has been done to the letter of the law at this point. Talking to Mr. Richards, she told him, prepare for trial and prepare your client for trial. This is going forward. So we're going to chalk one up on the side of victory over here. We're going to count up all these little victories until we get the big victory. The next thing that we need to talk about is something that you need to, you're going to have to probably pause this to wrap your head around and listen to what I have to say again, because it's a little hard to understand when you just take it on its face value. Since Jared was a juvenile at the time of the sexual assault rape in you know, night when it took place and the actual victim was a juvenile, and they can only charge him with one felony count of rape in the state of Utah. The second charge, again, was dismissed because it took place outside of the state of Utah. That one charge, felony. Jared Lasik and the case itself must proceed forward from the case law for 1991. In 1991, the... Well, the talking heads, the, those men and women in suits, you know, at in the state capitol, changed, added a little caveat to the law of no statute of limitations on sex crimes. They added this little caveat, and it, in that caveat says that from the date of the police report being filed, the district attorney has four years to file and bring the case to, you know, and actually start the case. They have four years. If it is for the forcible sodomy, rape, or incest, four years. If the crime happened against a minor, they have four years from the date of the police report being filed. I know that sounds weird. How would a, a young child, you know, know that they need to file within four years. And they were trying to get certain people out of being you know, being held on the hook here. This child didn't file the charges. It it didn't she didn't file them until 2022. So the, her four years start from that date going forward. That is the law of the land right now in the state of Utah. But here's where it gets confusing. Jared must be convicted and prosecuted underneath the standards that were in the state of Utah in 1991 for a juvenile. You heard that right. Even though he is an adult now and he you know, is a giant, you know, bigger piece of excrement today than he was in 1991, he must be convicted underneath the standards that were there in place in 1991 in the state of Utah. Evidence that, go, that comes in must be from of 1991 and meet the standards for evidence in 1991. Additionally, the sentencing guidelines are for a juvenile in 1991. You say to yourself, but he's an adult now. We're not 
prosecuting him as an adult for this crime. We're prosecuting him for a crime that he committed as a juvenile in 1991. And those are the laws in the state of Utah. So what were the standards of actual punishment in 1991 for a charge, one single felony charge of rape against a child under the age of 12? She was nine. When it happened, what were the average sentences? The average sentences were between four to six years for that actual charge in juvenile hall. Obviously, if Jared is given four to six years, they can't put him in a juvenile hall today because he's an adult. They, they, could sus they could go through the entire thing and suspend the entire sentence today and 2023's standards because he's an adult. He's no longer a juvenile, even though he committed the crime in, in that, that time. But additionally, they may ask that Jared not register as a sex offender in the state of Utah, because he's obviously, that was then, and this is now. But here is where it gets interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Jared does not reside in the state of Utah. He resides in the state of Oregon. And underneath the laws in 1991 and today in 2023 in the state of Oregon, Jerry would have to register as a sex offender for life in the state of Oregon. That's not how the law works. He lives there, resides there, and is defending himself as a defendant out of the state of Oregon. So the state of Oregon would have the ruling if he must register as a sex offender for life. He may not have to register as a sex offender in Utah, but again, he couldn't travel to any one of those states that he has connections to. Again, Oregon, Utah, Ohio, Michigan, Iowa, Wyoming, or California, or to Washington State, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, or Wisconsin. He couldn't travel to any of those states to as a you know AWP. He couldn't travel to them without having to get prior approval as a sex offender coming into their state or traveling through their state. The more likelihood is, from what I understand by speaking to several attorneys who are familiar with the laws in the state of Utah, the most likely scenario is that they will find him guilty and give him some kind of you know um, jail time where he won't have to go to prison. He will then have the rest of it suspended, and he will not have to register as a sex offender in the state of Utah, but will have to register as a sex offender in the in state of Oregon. That is the most likely outcome that is going to come from it at this point, according to them. Anything is better than what the, you know has happened so far. At least, hopefully, it will bring some kind of closure to the victim in this case. And now we're going to hear motions and everything else that are going to go forward before they ever you know get to the point of selecting a jury or anything else. Because you can bet your last dollar he's going to pick a jury trial over a bench trial in front of a judge. Because it's a lot harder to convince 12 people who don't know anything about the law as opposed to one person who's going to be well-versed in the law. Thank you. You take care, America. And the rest of the world, you take care 